Good morning, UUSS, whether you're in person or on Zoom, we are glad you are here. Please join us in singing number 1020, Woyaya. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you can hear me well. <laughs> I'll back up a little bit. I think it's a lot of loud. <laughs> Welcome to our Sunday service. And if you're here in person and if you're here on Zoom, we are so glad that you are here. I am today's worship associate, Celia Buckley, serving alongside the Reverend Lucy Bunch and the Reverend Dr. Roger Jones. The mission of our congregation says we come together to deepen our lives and be a force for healing in the world. Toward this end, we honor the Nisanan and Southern Maidu and Miwok peoples for their enduring commitment to steward this land where UUSS exists. We recognize they have never ceded, left, nor ceased to care for this land. For those of you on Zoom, to, if you'd like to follow what's happening today with an order of service, you can click the link in the chat box. And for those in person, it's on the back table if you didn't pick one up. Our blue sheet weekly announcement will give you information you need to know about what's happening this week and what's coming up later. And if you're new, the blue sheet can be an important guide to finding activities of interest to you. It's on the back table and also on our website and also in a link in our chat. Our weekly message comes out by email every Friday with announcements and a note from one of the ministers and it's located on our website. And we are happy to send you an email if you can fill out a newcomer's form, either by link in the chat box or on the greeters table after the service. Lots of things are happening here at UUSS. Next Sunday, June 4th at 2 p.m., join us for our Broadway and Friends concert fundraiser. Seats are still available and you can pay at the door before uh, the show. It's a $20 donation, but no one is turned away for lack of funds. On the second weekend of June, this congregation will once again hold our All Ages week camp, ca Weekend Camp for the first time since 2019. Reservations are now taking place online through the website, and there is also a table you can visit after church about the all ages camp on the patio out there uh, to learn more about having fun and building community on the lovely grounds of Camp Norga. It's about an hour drive and a world away from here. And if you're not going to camp, for the first time in many years, UUSS will have a booth at the Sacramento Pride Fair. Pride is Saturday, June 10th and Sunday, June 11th, 
and we need volunteers to staff our UUSS booth to tell people about what a welcoming spiritual community we are here. So please sign up out at the social justice table after the service or send a note to pride at UUSS and everyone is welcome to volunteer. And now please take out your cell phone even if you think it's off because if it's not off and you think it's off, it will ring during the service. <laughs> As happened in the concert last night. And while you're doing that, one more final announcement. Our fall dinner and service auction is scheduled for November 4th. And the auction team is looking for your ideas for this year's auction theme. And if, you're, if you pick the theme, you get a free ticket. Today is the last day to submit your ideas to uh, email auction at uuss.org and uh, voting will happen on June 4th, uh, next Sunday during coffee. And the winner gets the ticket to the dinner. And there's also more information about the auction uh, on the patio after services. And now again, everyone, welcome. And please enjoy our music for centering.
That was beautiful. Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be with you today. Lisa Bunker is our chalice lighter this morning. She's also going to sing to us about hippopotamuses later on in the service. <laughs> and our chalice lighting words come from the Reverend Sharon Wiley. May our time together this morning be a comfort and a confrontation. May we find here peace in times of tumult, and may we here invite tumult in times of peace. May we find calm in times of rest restlessness, and may we allow restlessness to evolve into action. Let this be a place where you consider what you've never considered. Let this be a place where you imagine for yourself something new, something unthinkable. May this light we now kindle illuminate new ways of being in the world. As we light our chalice here, we invite kids and those who are involved in religious ed to come forward and continue their exploration of today's themes uh, over yonder. And as we do that, we invite them to sing their song along with us, however many there may be. You got to put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You got to put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Don't, you Don't you despair. Look up ahead. Look up ahead. The, path the path is there. You got to put one foot, one foot, one foot in front of the other one. One foot, one foot, one foot and lead with love. You got to put one foot, one foot, one foot in front of the other one. One foot, one foot, one foot and lead with love. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here. It's great to see you all here and be with those of you who are here from home on Zoom. Uh, mentioning uh, religious education, this is the first Sunday of our summer program in religious education, which is called this year Summer of Skills. And various volunteers from our congregation will take a day or two in religious education uh, introducing a skill or craft that they have and then uh, inviting the children and youth who are participating on that day to, to try it out. And Jenny Johnson is our special guest presenter today. This is a community of care and compassion, of gratitude and celebration, and we acknowledge that richness in our time of joys and sorrows and prayers. In the weekly message, you can find a link to the Joys and Sorrows form uh, to let Lucy or me know uh, of your news, uh, whether it's just for us to know or whether it's for us to share. Today, we extend our care and healing wishes to members and friends who are undergoing medical treatments or who are healing from procedures. In particular, our member, Jimmy Davis has been ill and in the hospital this entire past week. We send our love to Jimmy and to his wife, Susan Davis. We send our prayers and good wishes for comfort, healing, and strength. Also among us on this day are many reasons for gratitude and we strive to remain open to joy and beauty and hope. The theme of the service today is the power of creativity, which makes it fitting that uh, our member Patty Taylor, who is uh, an artist 
known in the community as Taylor Goodermute and who is beloved by us in the congregation and appreciated for her sculptures here and on the redwood wall just outside our main entrance, happens to have a birthday today and she is turning 80. So congratulations and happy birthday, Patty. And as another school year concludes or approaches its conclusion, we honor those in our circles of care and affection who are students, teachers, professors, support staff members, and their families. Hang in there. You can do it. And for those marking a graduation or retirement or other milestones in education in these days, we extend our joyful congratulations. In particular, Susan Jones has shared the joy that Tarikula Rahimi is graduating this Thursday evening from Grant High School. Tariq spent his first three years of high school in Afghanistan and he is graduating with a 3.0 uh, grade point average and much love and support uh, from his family. I believe he's the oldest of nine children and uh, from this congregation. So congratulations. And speaking of uh, our, our neighbors and friends from Afghanistan, you can see the UU refugee support table outside uh, this room after the service. Now I in invite you to join me for a time of centering and prayer. First, notice your body, where it is resting, notice, where it is making physical contact, notice it. And notice your breathing as the breath of life lifts your torso up and out. Take a deep inhale breath and pause for a moment and then exhale deeply together with me. And now a deeper breath, inhaling, pausing and exhaling. And now as I offer these words of prayer for Memorial Day, let us invoke the spirit of divine love and human care to bless us and bless our loved ones and to bless all who share this earthly home with us. O spirit of life and love, another Memorial Day is upon us. On the solemn occasion of this national holiday, we acknowledge and honor the human beings who have perished while serving in the armed forces over the history of this country. The sacrifices include those lost in battle, those killed in accidents, and those who died after their service had ended because of wartime injuries to the body, mind, or spirit. On this holiday, we grieve the loss of the lives, the full and rich lives which they all might have lived, and the people they might have grown to be. As we mourn the losses, let us endeavor to practice peace, promote understanding, and end violence of all kinds. As we honor those who served this country, let us remember today the people of the country of Ukraine, people who continue to suffer under Russia's military aggression. We pray for the well-being of those risking their lives to resist this brutal invasion, and we extend our compassion as well to the Russian families who are caught up in their government's cruel machinery of war and lies, the tyranny which is causing the ruination of their country. We long for peace. We pray for mercy. 
O Spirit of love, grant us the courage to work for the dignity, liberty, and safety of all God's children. As we observe this holiday of remembrance, let us ask for the courage to embody our deepest values in all areas and aspects of our lives. As we remember the many lives lost, give us the grace to appreciate each day we are given to live. Let us give thanks for every good gift of life and share these gifts with others in peace. So may it be, blessed be, and amen. Now let us take a few moments of silence together for our personal prayers or private meditations. Blessed be and peace. Claim together that this is our song, number 159. Our reading for this service on creativity comes from the Reverend Marcus Liefert, who is, has been serving as the minister of the UU Congregation of Marin for the past five years and who has just been called to be the minister at the UU Church of Berkeley starting in the fall. It's entitled, Blessed Are the Makers. Oh, you who are makers, makers of beauty, of paintings and pottery and sculpture. Blessed is the making. You who make with hands and hearts and minds, 
who make out of breath and bones and blood human lives, blessed are the makers. Blessed are those who make us laugh, who make jokes and faces and toys. Blessed are those who make messes, who make trouble and friends, and when needed, make up. Blessed are those who make do, who make it last, make it work, make beds and make time for others. Blessed are those who make love, who make out, and make more, and make mistakes. Blessed are those who make coffee and tea, who make conversation, who make meaning in the face of tragedy, who make merriment and awaken joy. And blessed are those who make peace, for they shall inherit the earth. Um, I hope you're ready for a little bit of divine silliness. Um, I'm going to sing you a song from uh, Flanders and Swan, who were a music hall duo in Britain in the 50s and 60s, and this is going to be in the Broadway show next Sunday afternoon at 2 here in this room. Um, it's been an amazing experience getting ready for this. We have some very talented singers and musicians in this congregation, so I encourage you to come to this show next Sunday. Um, and this song is in the show because Flanders and Swan uh, worked up a musical review in London, and they took it on tour, and they played Broadway for a couple of years in 1959 and 1960. There is a part for you in this song, and I'm going to teach it to you now. You get to be the army of Hippopotami in the third verse. Um, could I have a G, please? Thank you. So I'll teach this to you line by line. Just repeat back to me what I sing. Mud, mud, glorious mud. Mud. Nothing quite like it for cooling the blood. Nothing quite like it for cooling Lovely. the blood. Lovely. So follow me, follow, down to the hollow. So follow me, follow, down to the hollow. Fantastic. And there let us wallow in glorious mud. And there let us Fabulous. All right. A bold hippopotamus was standing one day on the banks of the cool Shalimar. He gazed at the bottom as it peacefully lay by the light of the evening star. Away on a hilltop sat combing her hair, his fair hippopotami maid. The hippopotamus was no ignoramus and sang her this sweet serenade. Mud, mud, glorious mud, nothing quite like it for cooling the blood. So follow me, follow, down to the hollow, and there let us wallow in glorious mud. Hippopotama he aimed to entice from her seat on that hilltop above. As she hadn't got a ma to give her advice, came tiptoeing down to her love. Like thunder the forest re-echoed the sound of the song that they sang as they met. His enamorata adjusted her gata and lifted her voice in duet in French. La boue, la boue, la boue magnifique, il n'y a rien comme ça pour la santé physique. Donc venez avec moi dans la cuvette où on peut se voltrer dans la boue magnifique. 
more hippopotami began to convene on the banks of that river so wide. I wonder now what am I to say of the scene that ensued by that Shalimar side. They dived all at once with an ear-splitting splosh and rose to the surface again. A regular army of hippopotami all singing this haunting refrain. Mud, mud, glorious mud, nothing quite like it for cooling the blood. So follow me, follow, down to the hollow, and there let us wallow in glorious mud. Thank you, Lisa. Let the silliness continue. <laughs> we have a reading for you this morning. But you know, sometimes UU readings can be a little stilted. This one comes from um, the 19th century. And I don't know, I think we could do better than, um, than what this person actually said in the 19th century. So we're going to do it as a Mad Lib. <laughs> How many of you remember Mad Libs? Oh yeah, I got the right crowd here, that's for sure. So I'm gonna call out a, a form of a word form that I need and just send a few ideas to me and I'll pick the ones that I want to. So um, I, need a play, I need two things that are a place. It doesn't have to be a city, it could be you know, a garden or whatever. I just need, I need some ideas of a place. Okay, now I need a name. A, a name of something. <laughs> a few more. Okay, now I need an adjective. And I need another adjective. And a noun. <laughs> okay, uh, another noun. Article two. What'd you say, Karen? Article two. Ah. <laughs> Give me some more nouns. And I need a body part. Let's be clean, folks. It's church. And more nouns. Would you say, Beth? Okay, and a verb. Serenading. Wait, well, there's something over there I liked. Slosh. Perfect. Um, a verb. Would you say, Bill? Would you say, Doug? Burp. Burp? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and an adjective? Oh, good. <laughs> and a feeling? Okay, and then I need one more name. Okay, you guys are great. Okay, now we're going to hear the original. <laughs> this is called Go Out by Alfred Cole, and he imagined these were words by John Murray, an early American universalist preaching. Go out into the highways and byways. Give the people something of your new vision. You may possess a small light, but uncover it. Let it shine. Use it in order to bring more light and understanding 
to the hearts and minds of others. Give them not hell, but hope and courage. Do not push them deeper than their theological despair, but preach the kindness and everlasting love of God. Nicely done. Now let's see what we came up with. <laughs> Go out into Disneyland and Paris. Give Sam something of your chocolate vision. You may possess a flamboyant hippo. Let it shine. <laughs> Use it in order to bring more Article 2 and automobiles to the pinky toe and gallbladders of others. <laughs> Give them not slosh, but hope and courage. Do not burp them deeper into their loquacious ennui, but preach the kindness and everlasting love of Hubert. <laughs> Yay! Great job. And I don't even know what happens next. Oh, the offering. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Many times you could say following that with the offering is really something, but today I think it really is something. <laughs> Generosity is a spiritual practice, and our congregation has a practice of giving away, giving away half of every Sunday's offering to an organization that is working to make a difference in the world. And in May, our community partner is the National Alliance on Mental Illness, or NAMI. This is uh, the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization. NAMI is dedicated to building better lives for millions of Americans. What started as a small group of families gathered around a, a kitchen table in 1979 has blossomed into the nation's leading voice on mental health. Our local NAMI chapter is one of more than 600 local affiliates working to raise awareness and provide support and education. Me members of UUS are active in the local chapter and next Sunday after the service there will be a presentation by NAMI so that we can learn more about the silent epidemic of mental illness especially among younger people in our communities. So please plan to come and stay after to be informed about the services which NAMI provides. Thank you for your generosity to UUSS and to our community partner. This morning's offering will now be given and received.
Please join me in speaking in unison the words of response to the offering. May generosity bless our world and may gratitude nourish our spirits. So I've been told that I'm a creative person. I'm happy with that characterization. I feel creative. I have a restless energy around change and transformation. And I'm inspired by the world around me, stimulated. But I also appreciate that not everyone is happy when that quality comes out. I've had people tell me several times in my life to please don't have any new ideas just for a while. <laughs> now, I get that. Creativity usually means different, it means change. When something is creative, it can take us outside of our comfort zone. And in the case of church, when the minister has a creative idea, it means that somebody has to work to make it happen. We hum humans don't like uncertainty but we've been living with it for some time now. In fact, uncertainty is inherent in life. A 2012 study that I found revealed that uncertainty makes us less able to recognize creativity, perhaps when we need it the most. We shut down when we should open up. Pandemic, anyone? Creativity also implies vulnerability within yourself and with others. Trying something new, putting your ideas or out there can be scary and difficult. Let's just take a step back now and think about what we mean when we say creativity. I'm considered creative, but I don't paint, I don't sculpt, I don't do interpretive dance. Well, actually in the morning by myself, I do do interpretive dance. We have been given the idea that creativity is, has to be something novel, something significant, sculpting or painting, designing a building, something big, something that everyone can see. These activities are truly creative, creative with a big C, but for most of us, they can feel out of reach. This kind of creativity can give us pause and can cause us to label ourselves as not creative. So let's take another step back to what I want to label as everyday creativity. I chose that blessing of the makers that Roger read to remind us of the simplest forms of creation. So the author starts out with the big items, painting, sculpture, but then reminds us of the blessing of all forms of creation, of making things. He says, blessed are those who make do, who make it last, who make it work, who make beds and make time for others. Blessed are those who make love, who make out and make more and more mistakes. Blessed are those who make coffee and tea. And on Sunday morning, that's a very important blessing. Blessed are those who make conversation, who make meaning in the face of tragedy, who make merriment and awaken joy. Making is creating, from making soup to making love. There is something that wasn't there before. Something or someone is transformed, even in the smallest way. Play is a wonderful way of creating. We played a bit this morning with our Mad Lib, with our Hippopotamus song. My spouse and I have lived in our house for 23 years and have taken a dog walk almost every single day for all those years. Different dogs, but a walk every day. And we like to keep things lively by naming our dog walking routes, like we have the shady side, we have Planet Raymar, Big Square, Fulbright, postage and return postage. 
These are all names that we came up with over the years, and they give us delight. They connect us. They lighten our spirits. At UUSS, we do interplay every third Tuesday at 6 p.m. Totally creative. We use our bodies, our voices, we use silence and movements to create lots of little wonderful things within ourselves and with, and with others. Creativity can be an everyday event. In fact, it should be. Eric Kaplan is a TV producer who wrote a piece on creativity for the New York Times. He called it the five thesis of creativity. And I was drawn particularly to his thesis number three, creativity permeates life. He says, creativity fills our lives like the ocean fills the grains of a sandcastle, saturating the spaces between this moment and the next, this action and the next. As a consequence, you can be creative when you're doing pretty much anything. You can be creative when you walk to work, respond to grief, make a friend, move your body, when you wake up in the morning or hum a tune on a sunny day. We are constantly remaking our lives through acts of creativity. In fact, creativity makes our lives possible, just like water makes a sandcastle possible. Kaplan makes the argument that creativity is life, the refreshing water that renews us. He also argues that a life that is completely routinized and uncreative is no life at all. Creativity, large and small, is our life. It's how we express our lives in the world. There's a, a great story that I got from the Reverend Karen Anderson about the comedian Gary Shandling. It refers to an appearance he had on the web series with Jerry Seinfeld called Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. That in itself is a creative title. The show follows them around in a Porsche as they make jokes and visit old haunts. Then at one point, Seinfeld mentions the comic David Brenner. He says to Gary Shandling, David Brenner passed away last year. Do you ever think about, do you ever think about all that material? Shandling laughs in part incredulously but he knows Seinfeld so well that he, on some level, he knows that Seinfeld isn't kidding. Chandling says, I'm at a stage in my life where I actually care about the person. <laughs> but Seinfeld wouldn't let it go. All oh, that material, you work so hard, he says, it's just gone. And it doesn't mean anything to anyone anymore. Then Chandling replies, that material, and your material is purely a way for you to express your spirit and your soul and your being. It doesn't have any value beyond you expressing yourself spiritually in a very soulful, spiritual way. Shandling says, laughing at Jerry, it's why you are on the planet. It's why you are on the planet. This is wisdom that our lives are about creating and expressing and sharing in ways big and small, in ways that come from our experience, in ways that are offered with love. Referring back to that Kaplan article, his number five thesis was that creativity is a kind of love. He says that's why it can break your heart and why, at the same time, it can make the world come alive. When you're creative, you make something fresh and something new. When you love something or someone, you do the same. So let's pause here for a second and collect our thoughts, or actually let me collect my thoughts. So far, I have argued that creativity is the essence of life that it's a way of expressing our spirit, even expressing our soul. I've made the case that creativity is a form of love, 
not just big creativity, but everyday creativity. And I've said that a life without creativity is not a love at all, a life at all. So let's circle back and ask a bigger question, a theological question. If creativity is an essential part of the human experience, where does it come from? Does it come from the soul? Does it come from our unconscious? Does it come from a source outside of ourselves? How do we tap into it? The ancient Greeks and Romans believed that creativity was a separate divine attendant spirit that came to human beings from some distant and unknowable source, for distant and unknowable reasons. The Greeks famously called these divine attendant spirits of creativity demons. Socrates believed that he had a demon who spoke wisdom to him from afar. The Romans had the same idea, but they called this sort of disembodied creative spirit genius. The Romans didn't believe that a person was a genius. They believed that a genius literally lived in the walls of an artist's studio or in the oven of a baker's, a baker's oven and would come out and assist them in their work, help shape the outcome of their work. The term muse also comes from ancient Greece and is a term we use today for a person or an imaginary entity or force that inspires our creativity. I have a muse that helps me write my sermons. Actually, my muse dictates my sermons and I just type them. So blame her if you don't like what I say from the pulpit. <laughs> for some, the force that inspires us and urges us to create is God. Not that God that we learned about in, ch in childhood, that being, that anthropomorphized white-haired guy in the heavens, but a God that is an action, a God that is a verb, an energetic force, a divine spark, the urge to the new. Henry Nelson Wyman was a UU theologian who articulated this idea he said that God is not just the source of the creative spark, but God is the creative spark. God is the juice that opens our minds to new ways of thinking. Every time we engage with each other or ideas, when we engage with ideas that create something new, we are inspired by the energy of this divine spark. For Wyman, this experience of creation and the experience of the novel is what we are built for. And so he proclaimed that we feel most fully human and alive when we create. Wyman also felt that there's a special power in our creating together. He called this process creative interchange. And it's at work whenever individuals or groups or institutions engage or communicate in ways that foster new meanings. As we integrate these new meanings, our sense of the world's richness expands. We take in ideas from others, we create new ideas together, and our sense of the world's richness expands. Our sense of community strengthens. But more than that, Something deeper, something richer, something more meaningful comes into being when people create together. We are changed in ways that ripple out into our lives and to our world. A Unitarian Universalist congregation makes the perfect seedbed for creative interchange. After all, we come together to deepen our lives, right? And I can't think of a richer place for creative exchange than our Soul Matters groups, our small group ministry program, which wrapped, just wrapped up this week. These small groups create meaning and connection each time they meet. Thinking of these groups makes my heart sing. When I first started the program nine years ago, I had this idea that 
It would help people learn to listen to each other better. It would deepen their spirituality and develop connections with others in the congregation. But Wyman helped me to appreciate that the creative exchange of these groups creates new meaning, gives people an appreciation of the power of community. In the past nine years, more than 300 unique individuals have participated in our Soul Matters groups. And I imagine the ripples from this creative inter interchange expanding out to be a force for healing and justice in the world. So I hope I've inspired you a bit, perhaps given you sufficient encouragement to engage creatively on your own or in the company of others. Because creativity is needed now in our world more than ever. There's widespread, deep, and rapid change taking place in our world and in the very structure of our lives. Many people are uncomfortable with change and there is so much fear and resistance. You know it, you see it, you know what I'm talking about. People are turning to fascism, fundamentalism, militarism, trying to make sense of what is going on. People are using their creative energies to spend paranoia rather than build community or find solutions. Because of the complexity of our world today, we need creativity more than ever. I believe that only our creativity will save us as a species. We must break the hold that the old order has on us. We must create new ways of living and new ways of relating to each other. I had this idea during the depth of the pandemic, pandemic of all of this swirling around and that divine spark calling us, and we create this conga line through chaos, following through into the new, into creating the beautiful world that we know is possible. So give creativity a try. Or ramp it up a bit. Start small, start big, start where you are. All it takes is a willingness to be open to that divine spark. All it takes is a willingness to answer that call to the new. All it takes is an openness to your surroundings, to all beings that inhabit our world and bring their own creative ways. To engage in creative interchange with others that can make you smile, enrich your life, or change the world. So may it be. Answer many calls, some to creativity, some to love. Please join in singing. The promise of the Spirit, faith, hope, and love abide. And so every soul is blessed and made whole. The truth in our hearts is our guide. We are answering the call of love. And it's joined together as hearts beat as one. Emboldened by faith, we dare to proclaim. We are answering the call of love. Sometimes we build a bed. Love tightly bound, corrupted by fear, unwilling to hear, denying the beauty we found. We are answering the call of love, hands joined together as hearts beat as one, 
emboldened by faith we dare to proclaim we are answering the call of love a bright new day is dawning when love will not divide reflections of grace in every embrace fulfilling the vision divine we are answering the call of love hands joined together as hearts beat as one emboldened by faith we dare to proclaim we are answering the call of Extinguish, please join me in the following words. We extinguish this flame, but we carry the light, love, and commitment of this gathering into the days to come. Oh, let's reach out to each other. Let's reach out to those at home. Let's reach out to the possibilities that surround us. I hope you find and feel that divine spark this week. I hope that you can follow it, put aside your fears and your resistance, and take a creative step forward. Know that you are not alone. Come back here and tell us about the creative energies that you found and the ways that you opened your heart to the world. May it be so. Blessed be and amen.